Welcome to Mikon's hardware. In this video, I'm going to tell you about the updated version of Honan GX99 QD4 motherboard. This particular one was sent to me by a subscriber Adam, and I'm very thankful for that. About a year ago, I have tested and reviewed the original QD4, and back then it was my favorite go to X99 motherboard from China or from AliExpress. After that, I received numerous complaints about slowly degrading quality of Huanan G motherboards. Many people would complain that audio or Ethernet doesn't work, and sometimes USB 2 or USB 3 ports would just die out. Because of these quality problems, I have shifted my go to pick to Machinist X99 MR9A or MR9A Pro. But now we have got this updated version, and I have my hopes that Huananji quality are back on track. So far, I did not receive many complaints about this updated version of X99 QD4, and I have received multiple positive feedback from my Discord members and YouTube subscribers. Nevertheless, I have already got a couple of complaints that QD4 refuses to work in quad-channel configuration. The problem is the memory power delivery system or the PCB traces quality. The motherboard would work if you install only three memory modules, and it doesn't really matter which three of the four memory slots you would use. As soon as you have only three modules, it works. As soon as you install four modules, it refuses to boot. In the past, I had such problem with Machinist X99K9 motherboards, where the power delivery system to the memory is not good enough to power up and initialize four modules. It is unfortunate, but there is absolutely nothing you can do about it. If it is a hardware defect and hardware quality issue, you cannot fix it with a bias. In my case, my Huanan GX99 QD4 works in quad-channel memory configuration with no issues. Even if I use high-density 32GB ECC registered modules, the motherboard works just fine. So I can have 128 gigs of memory and I tested different CPUs, no issues whatsoever. I have also tested several different memory modules and my particular QD4 doesn't have any problems with four memory modules installed. Now, if I compare the 2024 version with the original one, we can see that the layout is different. The updated version has three M.2 slots for NVMe SSDs and one M.2 slot for Wi-Fi or Bluetooth adapters. Also, we have this PCI Express X4 slot, but we no longer have the X1 slot. The original layout had only two M.2 slots for NVMe SSDs, one PC Express X1 slot connected to the chipset, so it's PC Express 2.0, and one PC Express X4 slot connected to the CPU, so that's PC Express 3.0. Unfortunately, the updated layout has lost the PCI Express X1 slot, and the PCI Express X4 is now connected to the chipset, so this slot is limited to PCI Express 2.0. Some might think that the updated layout is better because we have three M.2 slots, but I actually think that the original layout was better. If you need a Wi-Fi Bluetooth adapter, you could install it into the PCI Express X1 slot, and if you need three NVMe SSDs, then the X4 slot connected to the CPU would provide you exactly the same speed. But with the X4 slot connected to the CPU, you can also use um, uh, some speedy network adapters or any other expansion cards that would require PCI Express 3.0. Even you could install an additional graphics card if you would wish to. In case of the updated layout, we have M.2 slot for Wi-Fi Bluetooth adapters, which is located under SSD, which is installed into this slot, so the antenna routing will be a nightmare. And the X4 slot is connected to the chipset, so it's PCI Express 2.0. If you install PCI Express 3.0 SSD into this slot, it will be limited with PCI Express 2.0 speed. So if you ask me, I prefer the original layout, but maybe some prefer for the updated version. Other than the layout, the motherboards are pretty much identical and the BIOS from the 2024 version is compatible with the original version and the original BIOS is compatible with the 2024 version. The only difference I was able to spot is that the 2024 version BIOS by default comes with RAM timings unlocked. 
So if you use a V4 CPU and you don't need to do Turbo Boost Unlock, then you can stay with the stock BIOS and there are no issues. If you are using V3 CPU and you want to implement Turbo Boost Unlock, then a ready-made BIOS from Mi 899 for the original QD4 is fully compatible with the updated QD4 and you can use it to unlock Turbo Boost. Additionally, I have also tested BIOS I engineer options for Machinist X99 MR9A and Machinist X99 RS9. The MR9A option is not compatible with QD4, but the X99 RS9 version works with Huanan G X99 QD4. With BIOS from iEngineer, you of course get all the required features such as run timings, resizable bar, and what's more important, the overclocking ability. Using Intel XTU with this BIOS, you can overclock CPUs with unlocked multiplier such as i7-5820K or Xeon E5-1650-1660 V3. One glitch I was able to notice is that the CPU power consumption is not reported correctly with BIOS from iEngineer, so it means that QD4 and X99 RS9 are not exactly one-to-one -one compatible. Still, if you have Huanan G QD4 and you want to overclock your unlocked CPU, then BIOS from iEngineer is the way to go. Other than that, the 2024 version is pretty much identical to the original QD4 version. If you're interested in technical details and specific test results, please watch my original video, but here I will briefly repeat everything you need to know. The motherboard comes with a 6-phase VRM, which is good enough for CPUs such as i 2697 v 3 with a Turbo Boost Unlock. But of course, as always, you need to have good airflow over your VRM zone, or you can use a flower-like CPU cooler or a box-like CPU cooler that I have here, so it will blow air straight uh, from the CPU to the VRM heatsink. The sleep mode still does not work on the motherboard, the smart fan still works only with 4-pin PWM fans and only with one header for the CPU fan. The second header and the 3-pin header are not controlled and not monitored. The motherboard has more or less accurate CPU power consumption and VRM temperature readings and I did not identify any issues with the audio, Ethernet or USB ports. Everything seems to be working just fine. Clear CMOS works as well. The motherboard has headless boot configuration, so you can start up this motherboard without graphics card, and restore on power loss works as well. The PCI Express lanes are still routed incorrectly. If you use CPU with only 28 PCI Express lanes, such as i7 5820K or i7 6800K, then the PCI Express X16 slot works as PCI Express X8, and only the last 8 lanes will be connected. So the graphics cards such as RTX 4060, RX 6600, or RX 7600 are not going to work on this motherboard with 28 PCI Express lane CPUs. Additionally, the first M.2 slot for PCI Express NVMe SSD drives will be disabled as well. So the PCI Express layout is not optimal for the 28 PCI Express Lane CPUs, but it's not something to worry about because most of you will use uh, X99 QD4 with the Xeon CPU, and these have all 40 PCI Express Lanes connected. It is also important to mention that Huanan G X99 QD4 has a debug one header. According to a Huanan G representative, this header is supposed to be used to install postcode indicator, but Bias I engineer says that it is possible to install TPM 2.0 module into this header. Unfortunately, the header is soldered in a mirror configuration compared to Machinist X99 motherboards. So even if you use BIOS from iEngineer with the TPM 2.0 support, you still cannot use the original Machinist TPM 2.0 module because the connections are mirrored. I plan to test if it's actually working or no, but so far we have what we have. All in all, that's pretty much it. There is not much more I can tell about the updated version of Huanan G X99 QD4. My particular sample does not have any major flaws, it works just fine, and if TPM 2.0 is not critical for you, then you can buy Huanan G X99 QD4, of course, if the price is right. 
If you need a micro ADX motherboard, then probably Huanan GX99 QD4 is the best. It has a lot of connectivity options, it also has quad channel memory configuration, and not the worst VRM. But if you can buy an ATX option instead, then Machinist X99 MR9A and MR9A Pro are still my go to options, simply because the motherboards have better BIOS and it is possible to add TPM 2.0 module. Plus, I have received less quality complaints about those motherboards compared to Huanan G motherboards, at least in the recent times. With this, I have to say thanks for watching, thanks for listening. I hope it was helpful and I hope it was interesting. Bye for now and see you in the next videos.